Hello everyone. Welcome to GoVM Lab VMware scenario based interview questions and answer series. As we have mentioned many times earlier that this series of lectures going to help our learners and professionals preparing for VMware L3 or senior level profile interviews. Now the, the objective of this particular series is that we really wanted professionals to understand that just doing the configuration is not good enough. You really need to understand that what happens in the backend and as the outcome of the backend understanding, you might see the results could be different. In the previous question number six, you might have seen that though you have configured teaming in your networking, it doesn't assure that there will be no packet loss or communication loss if one of the uplink goes down. We have seen the cases where you configure the teaming, but still we do see the packet losses are happening. So that's the continuous efforts. We are keep doing it and that's where we have a question number seven. And let's try to see that what problem statement has been discussed in the question number seven. And we really wanted our learners to understand that just doing the configuration is not good enough. You really need to understand what happens in the back end. So that's the expectation. We have it from our learners. So now here's the question number seven. And let's try to look at the question number seven. What it says that. So in the question number seven, if you really see that, what do we have? We have a VM one. VM one is connected to VM network port group of your virtual switch zero. And now if you really see that this particular V switch is actually having a three different uplinks, VM NIC zero, VM NIC one and VM NIC two. So the one difference you might have observed in the question number six and question number seven is that in the previous question, we had seen that our virtual switch was only having a two uplinks VMNIC 0 and VMNIC 1. But in this question number 7, our virtual switch is having a three different uplinks VMNIC 0, VMNIC 1 and VMNIC 2. So that's a one basic difference between question number 6 and question number 7. And if you really see that all these three uplinks are actually connected to a common switch, which is access switch 1. Now in the question number six, you might have seen that all of these two uplinks were actually connected to two different switches, access switch one and access switch two. But now in this given scenario, the second difference you might have noticed that in this particular scenario, all the three uplinks VMNIC zero, VMNIC one and VMNIC two, all these three uplinks are connected to a common switch named as access switch one. And this access switch one is actually connected to distribution switch one and that distribution switch is actually connected to your core switch. So this is how your left side diagram looks like. Now on the right side, if you really see that that is a VM2 connected to VM network port group of your virtual switch one. And this virtual switch is only having a two uplinks VMNIC2 and VMNIC3. Both of these uplinks are actually connected to a common switch named as access switch two. Now this access switch two is also connected to its own dedicated distribution switch two, and this distribution switch two is actually connected to core switch. So this is how our basic vSphere networking diagram looks like. Now let's see that what kind of policies vSphere administrator has configured it here. So now if you really see that the network policies, what has been configured at the vSwitch zero level by the VMware administrator is that they have configured teaming policy. That is pretty obvious. We know that as when my switch is configured with more than one uplink, we actually configuring our switch into teaming mode. But then the second important thing you really need to understand is the teaming policy. And as a VMware administrator, you might have seen that you have configured policy as an explicit failover order, which means that again, we are not talking about load balancing. We are not talking about how the traffic get distributed across these uplinks. We are just talking about failover order. And when you talk about failover order, as you could see that the administrator has also defined VMNIC zero as an active. So VMNIC zero is going to be active adapter and VMNIC one and VMNIC two is going to be standby adapter. That's the whole idea of explicit failover order where we have defined our failover order. Now the third important thing, what VMware administrator has configured as a part of network policies is that failover detection. So now, in this given scenario, the failover detection mechanism is configured as beacon probing. That is another very important aspects. You really need to understand it. Just configuring the teaming or just attaching more than one uplink to your virtual switch doesn't make your network highly redundant. 
you really need to understand the underlying theming policies detection failure detection mechanism the failover order what you have defined for your uplinks all those things plays a very important role to make your network highly reliable and redundant so now this is how our networking layout looks like now let's look at the problem statement here now what the problem statement says that in a given scenario vm1 connected to v switch 0 of esxi1 so as we have already discussed vm1 is connected to v switch 0 of our esxi1 host and it's trying to communicate with vm2 connected to v switch 1 of esxi2 so that is the vm2 connected to v switch 1 of your esxi2 host what would be the uplink status of vmnic0 vmnic1 and vmnic2 if the link between distributed switch 1 and the core switch goes down. Will there be any impact on network connectivity? So now the question here is that VM1 is trying to communicate to VM2. Let's assume that they have initiated a ping traffic from VM1 to VM2. Now the question says that the link between your distribution switch 1 and the core switch goes down. What would be the status of these three? uplinks it's going to be remain the same as active standby standby what you had configured it here or the status is going to be changed the second question is that when this uplink goes down will there be any impact between vm1 and vm2 network connectivity will there be any impact on vm1 or vm2 network connectivity if this uplink goes down will there be any change or what would be the status of your vmnic0 vmnic1 and vmnic2 uplink status so now i would suggest you based on your understanding with the vmware teaming configuration because this is a one of the very basic scenario and i hope everyone should be very much familiar with the teaming configuration so pause the video here try to understand this particular scenario the problem statement given in this scenario and then try to find out the answer and what do you think? Will there be an impact between VM1 and VM2 communication in the event of the link between distributed switch 1 and the core switch goes down? So now let's try to find out the answer of this particular scenario. Now before we try to find out the answer of this particular scenario, I just wanted to reiterate the message again that configuring the teaming is not good enough to protect your network from any kind of failure. Because you might have assumed that I have configured virtual switch 0 with three different uplinks, which is my teaming configuration. I have also configured my VMNIC 0 as active and two adapters are in standby state, which means that my network is protected. If one of the uplink goes down, I don't have any issues. The traffic will switch over to other uplink. If that uplink goes down, traffic will switch over to other uplink and there will be no packet loss between VM1 and VM2 and my traffic will continue to work. If that is the answer you guys have thought about it then let me tell you that it's wrong that is the beauty of vmware networking which we always tell our learners that don't focus only on the administrative or configuration task from the configuration perspective everything looks good because you have configured your vswitch with the three uplinks which means that your network has to be foolproof the network has to be reliable but now the kind of configuration or the kind of scenario you do see it here the thing doesn't work as you expect right so in this particular scenario if i give you the straight answer in a one single line the answer is that if this uplink between distribution switch one and the core switch one goes down there will be traffic impact between vm1 and vm2 the traffic will drop between vm1 and vm2 and we will be observing 100% packet loss that is the answer of this given scenario where no matter you have configured teaming policy no matter you have configured three uplinks in your team no matter you have configured beacon probing as a failover detection mechanism no matter you have configured vmnic0 as active or vmnic1 and vmnic2 as a standby adapter but still doing all this configuration which looks good on paper but in this given scenario, the traffic will drop and the communication between VM1 and VM2 will be broken and you will be observing 100% packet loss. And the reason is very clear that though you have configured beacon probing in the given scenario, but the way beacon probing works, it will not be able to detect 
the failure in the given scenario and because of which beacon probing will not be able to detect the failure in this given scenario all the the uplink state will remain the same which means that vm kernel will still assume that vmnic 0 is active vmnic 1 in standby vmnic 2 in standby and there will be no change in the uplink status though you have configured beacon probing as a failure detection because beacon probing the way beacon probing works it cannot detect accurate failures in these kind of scenarios so the answer to this particular question is that there will be packet loss and you will be seeing the communication broken between vm1 and vm2 now as we have discussed that this is not the scope of this particular series where we are going to explain you much more in depth that what is beacon probing how beacon probing works and why beacon probing will not be able to detect the failures in this particular scenario because for that you really need to understand that how beacon probing works so if you are genuinely interested at that level of deep dive learning then do reach out to us and we do have our dedicated vmware zero to hero deep dive program which will help you to understand the things not as administrator but as architect to understand that what is happening in the back end and this particular scenario is a classic example that just doing the things is not good enough from the vmware perspective if you really want to understand the technology then understand what is happening in the back end how these algorithms are working because that is the only key to success and that is the only key to master vmware technology if you have interest in learning vmware more in depth not from an administration perspective but from the architect or consulting perspective then join our vmware vsphere zero to hero data center expert program this particular program has been highly rated by all of our learners 100 plus careers have been transitioned successfully with our zero to hero data center expert deep dive program with the 100 percent placement record now what are the key highlights of this program as you could see that it's india's first job ready vmware learning program which has a 70 hours of intense learning with the 80 plus hands-on labs 40 plus scenarios would be presented to a learner as a challenge questions to assess their learning. We do have a mentors having a 15 years of experience and the certified professionals. You would be getting opportunity to have a one on one in person doubt clarification session with the VMware mentor and this particular zero to hero program will also preparing learners for L3 or senior level profiles. Now we have transitioned many careers with our deep dive program. And you can see some of the feedbacks right here on your screen. These are the feedbacks what we have received from all of our successful learners who has transitioned their career with us. So what are you waiting for? If you want to become VMware expert or want to master this technology, then call us now today on the given number or maybe drop us email on the provided email address. Thank you.